Hello and welcome to Autobit Everything with MicroS and DevOps or how I should really never name anything because I suck at it. I uh, can't even come up with the title. Um, before we get into this, uh, just a quick disclaimer that this is a MicroS server focused talk, not MicroS as a desktop. Uh, if you're interested in the desktop uh, application of uh, MicroS, uh, do check out uh, Darius and Richard's uh, recent talks uh, along with the Darius collection. Uh, they are fantastic. Uh, they definitely give you uh, the necessary insights to get you started uh, with MicroS as a desktop. Uh, but again, this is uh, focusing on the server side of things. With that out of the way, let's jump into this. Uh, my name is Attila Pinter. Uh, some of you may know me as uh, Edithor, uh, mostly from uh, Telegram. <coughs> I'm a father of three. I'm a husband. I'm a DevOps engineer. I'm a free open source software advocate. I'm an open source advocate. I'm helping out and working actively on the new open source docs team. Um, I'm administering and moderating at the open uh, Telegram channel. And uh, uh, I'm uh, an active uh, Tumbleweed user in the past circa five years now. <coughs> uh, along with that, I'm a CTO and founder of uh, OpenStorage.io. Um, OpenStorage uh, has been established in 2014 in, in Indonesia. It is a free open source company uh, focusing on uh, hybrid cloud uh, storage uh, solution. Uh, but we do have uh, uh, different uh, IT consultation services as well, uh, what we are providing to uh, our customers. But it's all business that's, uh, that's all work. Uh, what is important uh, is that the entire company is running on, uh, on OpenSUSE, uh, Tumbleweed and MicroS. So the, the large uh, storage servers, the large clusters are running on Tumbleweed while the, the, the compute uh, side, the application side of things is running uh, purely on MicroS uh, or Cubic for that matter. <coughs> um, but why MicroS? <laughs> well, like most of us here, I'm lazy, uh, mostly, uh, but no, not really. Uh, yes, yes, I'm really. Um, it has a, it has a, a Tumbleweed base, uh, so it's a rolling distribution. Um, <coughs> but uh, unlike Tumbleweed, it's, uh, it's significantly lighter. Uh, so with the DVD installation, we are talking about 350 RPM packages out of the box, roughly. So it's a very minimal, very uh, sleek deployment. Um, it, uh, it is a container host by design, uh, which uh, helps a lot uh, running uh, our different uh, uh, container loads on uh, uh, micro S. Um, it does support uh, ignition, uh, so you can deploy it on different VPS providers uh, and you can uh, start uh, the system with the pre configuration script um, with ignition, or you can use uh, combustion, uh, which is uh, micro S's own uh, solution, <coughs> which uh, is, uh, is a much more powerful solution than uh, ignition. Basically, you can uh, write uh, a basic shell script and you can feed it to it and uh, on boot is going to execute it. Um, MicroS is a, is a transactional uh, operating system, uh, an immutable operating system. What that means that... <coughs> apologies. What that means is that uh, uh, to... to that uh, your root uh, file system is read-only, it's immutable uh, with, a, with a few sub-volume as uh, exceptions. Um, but those exceptions are existing only so you are not losing data. But you're writing over there, <coughs> uh, such as home or your root, for, root folder or warlib. Um, uh, basically, uh, for your changes to the system to take effect, uh, such as uh, changing your grab config, uh, changing uh, uh, different uh, system configurations, or just installing packages for that. Uh, for those changes to take effect, uh, you actually need to reboot because you're applying these changes not on the current snapshot where you are right now, but on a future snapshot which you have to boot into. Um, <coughs> um, this, this, this is actually a, a huge strength of uh, 
of microOS in my opinion. Um, uh, transactional updates are also uh, taking care of uh, the automated updates of the system, uh, which is checking daily basis uh, if there are updates available and pulling those updates and applying those. Uh, once those updates are applied, uh, it sends a message to Reboot Manager uh, and tells Reboot Manager that, hey, I'm finished. Uh, you can reboot uh, whenever is your maintenance window. And when that window comes, uh, the server automatically restarts. Now, uh, this is a rolling distribution. <laughs> so <coughs> uh, most of you are already either left or getting ready the pitchforks. Uh, that uh, to, to provide some safety, some additional safety uh, to this. Uh, because keep in mind that Snapper is still sh snapshotting the system. Uh, there is also an additional tool called Hell Checker, which is basically uh, extendable with different uh, plugins, custom plugins. Uh, it comes with a few defaults that's checking uh, for uh, existing services if they are running or not after an update and the reboot. And if it's not running, it's just going to uh, restart and roll back to a previous uh, snapshot. Um, there is also no Yoast uh, in the system, <coughs> uh, but quite frankly, I've been uh, running MicroS for uh, about a year now um, in production and I yet to start missing Yoast uh, because uh, during the installation, you have Yoast, you can configure everything. And that's where I'm personally configuring the time zone and uh, configuring the network. And once it's booted, uh, then it's uh, it's all set. So <coughs> there is no yes. Uh, it, quite frankly, it would be a lot of packages and a lot of work to really get it to, to work well. Uh, but yet again, it's an immutable operating system. Your root is read only, so you wouldn't have much use of Yast anyway. Uh, but there is Cockpit <coughs> with a few fantastic modules. If you don't know what uh, Cockpit is, it's an administration uh, web user interface uh, for uh, different distributions out there. Uh, it's, it's just great. Uh, you can add the multiple servers to it and you can monitor those servers from uh, a single platform. Basically, bottom line is Microsoft is not your uh, typical server operating system. But, oh my god, that's a rolling distribution in production. Um, <laughs> this is why I was saying that some of you are probably getting ready the, the pitch force. Uh, just, just, just hear me out, just calm down, put out the torches, just sit down and, and hear me out. Uh, open source rolling is, uh, is not like every other rolling distribution out there. <coughs> well, by the way, you might know. Um, <coughs> uh, but you, you need to make a decision. Uh, when do you want to have uh, new features in your system? Uh, you want to have it now uh, because it's already out or you want to have it four years from here or two years from here into the system or are you okay with the, these hacky uh, backported <coughs> uh, solutions? Well, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> OpenSUSE has a, a very well proven battle hardened uh, infrastructure in place uh, to really run uh, the, this project. Uh, one of that is OpenQA. And OpenQA, if you don't know what that is, uh, OpenQA is <coughs> an automated uh, quality assurance system that basically runs a bunch of tests on the packages before it is being released. It is also important to mention that there are no alpha or beta versions uh, neither in Tumbleweed nor MicroS. Uh, and if really something goes wrong, you still have Snapper, uh, which is automatically snapshotting the system, so you can always roll back. <coughs> or in case of MicroS, you can just leave it to MicroS itself. Uh, let the system, health checker, look for problems, and if there are problems, then it will just roll it back for you. Uh, so, uh, really, uh, we, we, we touched base on Hellchecker a few times, but really how are these plugins are looking like? Uh, and it's really, that's how simple it is. <coughs> it's just a shell script that basically it checks if 
if it is installed uh, the, in the first place, the, the package or service um, uh, that's, uh, that's coming out of the box with LChecker, <coughs> and if it's existing, then is it uh, enabled? And if it's not, then what should be the, the case? And basically, the, the HellChecker plugin, uh, you can use this as, as a base plugin and you can start writing your own plugins to look out for your custom services, uh, which are not necessarily covered by uh, the project. Uh, I left here the source uh, to this one. This is uh, the official uh, cryo uh, check <coughs> uh, plugin. But based on this, you can start writing uh, your own uh, health checks uh, for, or for your own packages and services. Uh, as simple as that. <coughs> and on boot, uh, health checker going to start running these. And uh, if anything went wrong uh, during the update, it's just going to roll it back. Um, but uh, let's talk security for a second. Um, what is your uh, general update strategy? It doesn't matter if you, you are working as a sysops or sysadmin or devops engineer. Um, but, uh, but what is the update strategy uh, in your company, in your organization? Or what is your own personal update strategy? Uh, are you still one of those guys <coughs> who are after the high uptimes? Uh, because if yes, uh, well, then I just assume that you're vulnerable to all sorts of crap that is out there. Um, so with the, with the read-only uh, root file system, you're also providing a significantly smaller attack surface uh, from different kind of uh, attacks what uh, would potentially uh, harm your system <coughs> or encrypt your data or do all sorts of crazy things. Uh, MicroS is, uh, is the first distro uh, in the OpenSUSE project that is coming with SLinux. And uh, that is the, the best decision uh, the project ever made. Uh, because quite frankly, utilizing UpArmor to secure your containers and your container runtime, it's like holding up a piece of tissue to try and hold back a bullet. Uh, it's not exactly smart. <coughs> so uh, MicroS, uh, just like all the other open source projects, uh, the, the different distros, are really designed with security in mind as well. And uh, MicroS is, uh, is significantly better uh, at, at this than Leap or, or Tumbleweed at this point. <coughs> um, the, the other uh, interesting thing, what I'm also touched on uh, briefly, <coughs> is uh, Reboot Manager and uh, how are you setting maintenance windows. Um, you not necessarily want uh, your your system to constantly uh, reboot every day. Uh, for example, I have uh, customers who are who are not into updating every day, uh, but the update window is on Sundays, <laughs> which I was able to negotiate down to <coughs> Monday midnight. <laughs> um, so when I wake up here, uh, it's it's about. Uh, 2 a.m. over there, and I'm able to, to check the system if anything went wrong. Yet to happen, uh, nothing happened. But uh, <coughs> these maintenance windows are fairly important. So number one is Reboot Manager. So in the Reboot Manager configuration file, you are, you are able to set different uh, uh, reboot strategies. So by default, it's set to best effort. So basically, whenever it is able to, it will it will just restart. <coughs> and you set it the window and uh, how long that window lasts. And basically, when transactional update says that, yes, the updates are done, the updates are set, uh, you can restart uh, in your window, whatever you feel like. And then Reboot Manager is going to uh, restart the system. Uh, but for more details, do check out the linked uh, uh, manual page. Uh, which brings us to the next component of, uh, of the main three things uh, is uh, transactional updates. <coughs> and uh, for this, you, you need to change uh, basically um, one thing. Uh, it might be hacky a bit, but uh, meh, it works. 
uh, and that is basically just editing your your timer. So <clears throat> here, this is this is a simple uh, system D timer. Uh, there is not much new to this. Um, you just set your timer block uh, the way you want it, and it will just happen. Uh, this is the default com the configuration. It's not kept per persistent, so <clears throat> ideally it's not missing uh, the, the service run. And if it does, then it doesn't really matter. It just runs down the next day. Uh, but basically here you can set, uh, for example, like, like we did, uh, we are uh, set to uh, weekly. And that means that Monday 12 a.m. it's going to run down and it's going to uh, update uh, itself. Uh, so I know that this is uh, quite a lot to take in. So let, let's let's take a break, right? Uh, because this is focusing on DevOps uh, with microOS, uh, and so far we've been just f focusing on microOS. So we covered uh, microOS uh, very briefly, uh, the update mechanism, the health checks, uh, the automated rollbacks, and uh, basically the maintenance, the self-maintenance of uh, the system and how you are able to orchestrate this. So uh, th th this is really important that, uh, and I didn't mention this, but if I go back here for a second, so Reboot Manager will be incredibly important if you have, for example, a small three node cluster uh, doing, for example, load balancing or running an AJ proxy. You probably don't want those to restart the same time and basically using uh, reboot manager you would be able to orchestrate uh, the maintenance windows uh, this is uh, this is fairly important <coughs> so uh, micro s bottom line self-maintaining self-sustaining you set it up once and you forget about it um, it just works um, but what is next so where, where is uh, where is the fun comes in really? Because so far at this point you have nothing else, just uh, just an operating system. But uh, you probably want to deploy some applications, uh, and this is very important to point out that microOS by design should focus on doing just one thing and one thing only. Uh, in case of uh, open storage, uh, we are utilizing microOS to host and run containers. Uh, or in case of Cubic, it's, uh, well, it's pretty much the same thing, uh, but with more advanced tools. Uh, so on microOS, we are using Podman. Uh, yes. And why Podman? <laughs> well, I could read this out, but uh, really, Podman is just awesome. Podman is uh, everything what Docker is supposed to be, uh, starting with OCI compliance. Uh, Kubernetes is removed. Uh, Kubernetes has removed uh, the Docker runtime uh, for a reason. So it's a pain to maintain. It's not OCI compliant. Da 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 da. Doesn't matter. Uh, by design, out of the box, Docker is is not exactly secure. You always have to have a daemon uh, that's running root full with uh, full uh, root privileges. And uh, basically, there is not many options around it. Yes, of course, you, you can figure some ways, uh, but it takes effort, and you need to actually configure this. Uh, in case of Podman, <coughs> you don't have these issues. Uh, it's uh, it's a lot more thought through uh, than than Docker. Uh, it supports rootless and daemonless container runtimes. So <coughs> basically. Uh, you can set up uh, your user uh, and the group namespace and uh, you can just start running uh, containers uh, as a user uh, without running any demons. Uh, also, uh, Docker has the habit that it really doesn't work well uh, with, uh, with anything uh, like, like firewall D uh, that, that would touch uh, IP tables. Um, <clears throat> In exchange, Podman, uh, considering its its roots, uh, it it works and plays a lot better and smoother uh, with Firewall D. So you can actually, and we do have servers like this that's publicly accessible. Uh, not having a firewall is not an option. Uh, the the VPS provider firewall is well. 
tanks, no tanks. Uh, I'd like to control my own infra <coughs> as much as I can, even if we are talking public public land. But uh, really, uh, the the biggest uh, thing what really made us to 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 get into Podman is the system the integration. Um, Basically, I just can uh, I can just run the the containers uh, with system the units and uh, the Podman auto updates. So I can enable the auto updates just by starting the detached containers with a single label, and it will know uh, that those images can be automatically updated. And Podman auto update does that uh, on the daily basis. So Podman is great. Um, for uh, th this is a, this is a simple deployment. So if if you look at the the the, the upper uh, piece here, uh, how we are deploying nginx uh, with a read only access to uh, certifications and uh, the content itself, what it has to serve. So <coughs> if you look at the syntax, it is absolutely not any different than what you would uh, use in Docker. And in many cases, uh, people uh, say that uh, you can just create an alias for Docker uh, to Podman, and you can just copy paste the Docker comments from, from all these tutorials and it will work. Um, but uh, <coughs> uh, it's not at all different uh, for a MariaDB deployment. Uh, it's, uh, it's very much the same thing. Um, so the syntax will be uh, consistent, uh, but let's discuss uh, the at least two flags. Um, so uh, the label IO container auto update image, and this this is what I referred to earlier. That this is the label what you need to set if you want to use Podman auto update. Uh, the the Z and the arrow arrow is is obviously a read only, uh, and Z is basically uh, telling <coughs> uh, SLinux. Uh, that this container uh, cannot be uh, uh, SLinux. Uh, so basically, the Z flag is is stating that this container's volume uh, cannot be shared with uh, other containers. As simple as that. Uh, again, the same kind of syntax, other than the label, uh, what you use in uh, Docker. Um, how are you building your own containers? So on the right, uh, I have a small make file, uh, which is basically taking a tumble with image, uh, dumping it and installing Cotern, exposing the necessary ports. And on the left side is the way you're building it. So <laughs> yet again, uh, it's uh, not uh, much different than uh, a, Docker, uh, <coughs> a Docker RAM file. Uh, because it's uh, identical. Uh, should you run all, all this stuff manually all the time? And uh, this, this is where we are getting uh, a lot closer to the DevOps in nature of this. Uh, you shouldn't, you really shouldn't, because uh, you will forget about it. Uh, scripts are scripts and yeah, 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 scheduling, yeah, sure. But uh, manually running all these things is absolutely not an option. So this is where CI CD comes in. Um, so <coughs> GitLab CI uh, and the, the way we are using it at uh, open uh, at open source is kind of uh, kind of key part of this. Uh, so we are utilizing GitLab CI to create daily builds of uh, our uh, uh, container systems and put these out into our own uh, registries. So at the morning, uh, the, the builds are happening. So throughout the day, we can we can check if uh, anything went wrong, we can fix it, we can patch it, um, but automatically it puts itself out, uh, if the build itself didn't fail, put itself out uh, to, <coughs> to uh, a staging environment. Then there is another build uh, at the end of the day which is basically uh, doing the same thing, but pushing to a different registry, uh, which is uh, the, the registry where the production is uh, uh, getting uh, all the, the, the images from. So oh, most of the, the containers are coming with their automated testing, 
but just to make sure we are also uh, checking uh, because you can run into issues like uh, a group ID has changed uh, or whatever. <coughs> so you better make sure. Uh, so all of these uh, uh, pipelines are running every time the, the master branches changes. So any commit happens into master, uh, it basically runs the pipeline. So if we have a hotfix uh, to put out, all we need to fix uh, 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 is basically the code base, push it to, uh, to our GitLab instance, and then it will take care of itself uh, from there on. And later, uh, at the middle of the night, uh, Podman is uh, running its own update cycle. So uh, not many problems there. Um, along with the GitLab CI, we are also utilizing Ansible as uh, our configuration management, which is, uh, which is really great because Ansible has uh, a lot of uh, out-of-the-box uh, modules uh, for doing all sorts of all sorts of things. Uh, what you would normally uh, do from uh, Bash scripts or Python scripts, <coughs> what have you. Uh, but Ansible is doing it in a much more modular way. You can basically reuse these plays, uh, what you're writing, and uh, you you don't really need an agent. So Ansible is an agentless uh, 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 story, and that's pretty much the main reason I like Ansible, because uh, I don't want to run an agent on my servers. I want to be able to SSH in and just run different uh, uh, comments. Granted, uh, this can be a little bit slower at times, um, but I'm, I'm perfectly patient. Um, along with that, uh, if, uh, if you have needs for a web user interface for uh, for uh, Ansible, uh, AVX is the upstream uh, project of uh, Tower. Uh, it works great. Uh, it's a, it's a really handy project if you if you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, but I strongly recommend checking out Ara Project Ara, uh, which is a really nice uh, web user interface to sort your your runs and uh, and look at things what was really happening. Uh, I strongly recommend checking out actually both uh, to at least know about them, that they are existing. Uh, Ansible is also really good uh, with uh, managing secrets. Uh, so those are not things what you really want to expose uh, either in your, uh, in your own uh, GitLab or on your public uh, Git. Uh, those are not wise things to do. So Ansible Vault is, uh, is capable of storing decrypting and encrypting uh, different secrets like like passwords or tokens uh, for you uh, without much of any effort so let's let's look at uh, look at examples so we've been talk talking a lot um, so here I have uh, an example container build uh, this is a GitLab uh, CI so th this this is basically uh, going up and being run in the jobs. So if you look at it, and th this bit, <laughs> this may look uh, very, very familiar. So these are doing nothing else, just running SHA commands. So uh, you remember those days when it was not cool to run bash scripts uh, because that's not fancy enough? Uh, well, guess what? Every single uh, CI tool is basically using uh, shells. Um, so basically, uh, all I'm doing here is, if you if you look at this, uh, I'm passing along a few variables which I have predefined uh, in the project, and uh, based on that, uh, I uh, pull down uh, images. Uh, I make sure that uh, the the registry for me is set. Cotern uh, will be the the container name. Uh, this is a Cotern uh, container uh, image. And uh, basically, I'm passing also the auth file. So uh, the authentication uh, is really what's uh, coming from outside of the container. Uh, the OCI registry and the container name is, is uh, predefined in variables here. Um, and basically, it pulls down the main image. I, I like to do that uh, prior. Uh, I go into the build itself. Uh, and then it does the build. 
and then push it out and then cleans up after itself and that's to it uh, and this is the sample output that how that really looks like and uh, you can see that the job succeeded and uh, it's good to go uh, let's look at something a little more complex um, this uh, this this has uh, a couple stages a couple of stages so if if i go back here there is a single stage no biggie i'm just building containers on a daily basis in a scheduled fashion okay here this one is a bit more complex um this is utilizing uh, uh, a docker executor uh in the gitlab runner uh i predefined that please use leap <laughs> i predefined the stages and uh, there will be one for sure <laughs> i promise uh, but basically, uh, I, I tell GitLab that uh, don't clean out uh, my project, my project folder. Don't don't clean it. So leave it as is. So if my build is done and it moves into deploy, I don't end up with a cleaned out uh, project because nothing sucks more than that. You can do this with artifacts as well, or just with caching. It's it's totally up to you. Um, but basically, the the build stage runs uh, before it goes into the script. Uh, so, by the way, this is all happening in a in a lib container. Uh, before the script actually starts running, I install the necessary packages. Uh, I go into this uh, host uh, folder. I execute npm install. I run the build and just package it up and I'm good to go. Um, this package, uh, what you create, uh, you could use it as an artifact if, uh, if that's your cup of tea. I'm using it later uh, in the deploy job, actually, um, <coughs> where I'm uh, basically uh, telling the system to install Ansible, uh, I'm passing along the private key and uh, get it to run an Ansible playbook uh, from the project. So th these two things basically uh, working in a hybrid uh, manner, uh, where I'm executing an Ansible playbook uh, within uh, a GitLab CI, uh, which is running on a container. Uh, by the way, the private key is uh, coming uh, from a GitLab CI variable uh, from outside. Uh, so this is uh, there is no public uh, private key anywhere uh, in the project other than inside a protected variable. <coughs> so the, the build output will be that the job succeeds, uh, the, the build happens and the tar will be uh, put out there and uh, everybody is happy, la di da da. Uh, uh, that's the expectation. So, this was uh, a bit sped up, uh, but uh, the play itself, uh, before uh, anything, uh, this is basically how it looks like. So this is that small play uh, what is actually being stored uh, in the project and being executed to uh, put out uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, small uh, test build. Um, where it basically copies over everything, uh, sets the the owner, uh, and sets the group, uh, make sure that there is a backup there, and uh, then when it's all set down, just delete the git folder because it's not something uh, you would want to leave there or expose. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, rolling uh, distributions in production is a good thing. Um, you don't need to wait years uh, for a feature to land. Uh, it's just not reasonable. Uh, there is not much more negative aspect of uh, running, uh, uh, rolling uh, than stable. So with stable, you you have just as many issues potentially. Uh, maybe even more because you have to do these point releases or, or minor releases and my major releases with, with the with rolling distributions you you really save yourself that headache that you don't need to allocate uh different maintenance windows that uh, okay so this today i can update this batch of servers tomorrow i can update those batch of servers it's just no it's it's absolutely not 
Reboot Manager, set up your maintenance window, let it run on a daily or a weekly basis at least, you will be good to go. Uh, use automation wherever it is possible. Uh, use a configuration management. Uh, we are using Ansible most of the time uh, because we found it it's the easiest uh, if we are hiring new people or we are working with others. Uh, it's the easiest to explain uh, how it works. It's just pure YAML. Uh, it's very well documented. Uh, but uh, Salt is a, is a great alternative. Chef, Puppet, there, there are options. Uh, use uh, some sort of uh, CI tool. If it's not GitLab, there there is Travis Jenkins, uh, Circle. It's it's totally up to you, uh, and implement the monitoring solution. Uh, but uh, that's all the time we have, so maybe next time. Uh, I thank you very much. Uh, my presentation source is uh, available, and you can reach me uh, at the the listed uh, addresses. Thank you very much.